What's going on guys? I got an awesome guest for you today. This is Steve Schinholzer. He's created several multi-million dollar businesses and I'm interviewing him, him here today in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We have mountains right behind us. We're at this live CSA Mastermind Group event and this guy is a wealth of knowledge. He has created several multi-million dollar businesses and the things he talks about, to be frank, no bullshit. So uh, I'm very honored to interview him today. He'll also be presenting at the group that he co-founded with Tom Reaver, the CSA group. And there is a whole group of guys here today. We'll be having uh, meetings and there'll be more to come. But right now, this is really cool. He's sitting here sipping his coffee and nice to meet you, sir. Keith, how you doing, man? Good very to well. finally meet you. Keith and I have met on the phone a few times about mm -hmm. six months ago, something like that. We've had this on and off connection and we've probably made it happen in person because we're going to have Keith come out and spill his beans to my group this hour, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. So I'm happy to be here mm -hmm. and I'm happy to have a no bullshit conversation. Yes. Because you know, you got one life, you only got so much time, time's the only goddamn thing you'll never get back. And if you fuck it up right now, you're going to be sorry. Yeah. So. Let's see. And uh, don't mind if we're squinting a little, we got the sun right in our face, so it's a beautiful sun. It is bright as can be out here, trust me. So we, uh, we got up early, we're, we're getting some coffee here, and uh, we instantly got into a conversation, and he asked me about this YouTube thing, and I was like, dude, I'm just thinking about, you know, I just listened to Tony Robbins Unshakable, and then we started talking about, well, what if you become successful and end up like Robin Williams, and then he, he gave this awesome perspective about success, because you go hiking every day. Yeah, I, I hike every day. Yeah, I hike every day behind my house. I live on a river in Maryland, and I hike five miles with my dog every single day for two, two or three reasons. One, you need your own time to figure stuff out and reflect and think what you're doing. Two, I stuff my ears full of great iPods and all kinds of good information, a lot of audio books and stuff. I also talk to people in my group and people like Keith the whole entire time. So that allows you time to reflect and figure out what you did right or wrong the day before, what the hell are you gonna do today, and how are you gonna make your, your master plan happen. But the point is, my, my quest now really is to be happy. And Keith and I quickly, we just, we just rambled on about a boatload of topics, like boom, 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 boom. And yeah. Keith was like, can we just interview this thing right now? Because we talked about money, and money allows you a certain amount of freedom, but money's only one box that you have to check off in life. I mean, look at Robin Williams, we talked about him. He checked the money box off 30 years ago, and the guy ends up hanging himself on a doorknob with a tie with his wife and kid downstairs. So uh, there's many more boxes to check off in life, and, and we're all trying to get to the same place. Tell me if this isn't you. You just wanna be happy. You don't want to worry about the money things. And I'm not talking about being a rich, greedy pig. I'm talking about not depending on the government for Social Security and eating dog food when you're 65 years old. We just want to have a good life and we want to enjoy it all along the way. Mm -hmm. And I see so many contractors, and I was one of them, that work 80 to 100 hours a week and you just eat shit all week long. Let me tell you something. The average Home Depot manager, do you know what the average Home Depot manager makes a year? Okay. Average across the country, $91,000 a year. Now here's what you have to do to be a manager. You gotta eat crap for 60 hours a week and you get to go home. So if you're eating crap for 80, 100 hours a week and you're not making $91,000 a year, you need to quit what you're doing and go be a Home Depot manager. So you can also start to check off the happy box also, not just the money box. But if you are your own entrepreneur, you're in a very kick-ass situation because you can make large, lumps of money quickly. If you're the manager, you're gonna make 91 grand. No more, no less. But we've all done these jobs where, God damn, I just made a killing. I made 10 grand in one week, 20 grand in one week. And if you're smart about those chunks of money and don't go out and buy a new Bobcat or something stupid that you don't really need, and you take that 10 grand and you invest it properly, and then by the time you need that 10 grand, when you're 65 years old, that 10 grand could be a million. You know, stupid investments. We were talking about Chipotle Mexican Grill. Yeah. Chipotle Mexican Grill, a couple of months back, uh, 18 months ago, got hit with a uh, salmonella. 60 people got sick. The stock cratered. You take that 10 grand, and I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just telling you what I do. 
And you go in there and buy a good company when it just got the shit beat out of it. And right now, we're just waiting for it to float up. But it could have been Walmart. It could have been that Home Depot. Just invest in Warren Buffett, Jesus Christ. That's all that guy does. He runs around and buys good companies. Uh, can go I ahead. Real quick? It seems like, uh, and it's very obvious that you've overcome and you've uh, a lot of trial and error and you've overcome the precipices of quite a few mountains. But going back to where you started your business, what is uh, your main contractor business with the ponds that you sold? Yeah, we built ponds and waterfalls, right. Uh, it's Premier Ponds. Yeah. And I started that, this, I'm in my 16th year, but I hired two great guys about 10 years ago. And I've always told them that I'm go I want a partner. I need an exit strategy. I need to leave one day and I want you guys to be it. So if you turn out to be partner material, then we'll talk about it. And on December 31st, 2015, I sold each one of those guys 30% of my company each. And if you ask them, what is the sole goal from Steve to them, they will tell you one thing. Steve is going to make me a millionaire. That is the point of the whole thing. I want these guys to get their piece of the pie, have the American dream, they bust their ass, and, uh, and I need to leave one day. I just turned 60, mm -hmm. and you know, I got a couple of more years because they had to go out and borrow a bunch of money to pay me for the shares. I'm busting my ass to help them make the big money so they can pay off the banks. So now when they get a big check, you know, in a couple of years, it goes in their pocket, not to the bank. Then they feel like they have something. And then also uh, you've consulted or you're consulting and coaching them to be the best in that? Oh yeah, no, we talk every single day. I, all the things that I teach in the Contractor Sales Academy, they've been listening to me for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Tom Reber and I, my partner of the CSA, we started that three years ago. And it's a group of 55 companies, like-minded small business owners, contractors of all walks in life. We just try to teach them how to run a business how to save time, actually enjoy their business again, and make a boatload of money. And I mean a boatload of money. And the average person that comes in and listens to the stuff that comes out of my mouth, they'll make 50, 60, 70, 80,000 in their pocket more than the year before. Now, if you're a single man show, you know, cutting grass all by yourself, it's gonna be hard to make an extra 50 grand. Mm -hmm. But if you got two, three guys, I mean, I run my business, my palm business, out of my garage in my house. I'm a home-based business. I got two great guys, two pickup trucks, and I got four other employees besides them. That's it. We did last year $1.44 million, and half of that goes in our, the partner's pockets. Half of it. Because of the 50%, at least 50% well, gross profit? Well, because we, I teach everyone to make at least 50% gross profit, at least minimum. If, you're, if, you're, if it costs you five grand to cut a tree down, charge 10 grand. And, and I know I know everybody says, oh, that's just you. It can only happen in Maryland. That can't happen to me. That can't happen to my industry. It can't, it can't, it can't. It's bullshit you're telling yourself. You know what? Whatever you tell yourself, you're right. Whether you can or you can't, you're, you're correct. You know, by the time we're 17 years old, here's an here's, here's amazing stat. By the time you're 17 years Long old, okay. you, have, you have heard, no, you can't do that. It's not gonna work 150,000 times. You know how many times you've heard yes or yes you can? 5,000. So there's 150 negatives, 150,000 negatives to 5,000 positives. It's no wonder, is there no wonder that we just don't think we can do it by the time we get there? And the other thing I did, I'll tell you one other little secret. I had a, my first company I started in the mid 80s, it was a lifeguard business. And it grew up to be the world's largest lifeguard business, but provide lifeguards to apartments, condos, country clubs, community pools. And I had another partner we started that with, and we quickly went to managing 500 facilities with 3,000 teenage lifeguards. You talk about a pain in the ass, but it was a great learning experience. We built that company, the swimming pool company, and we built, I built the pond company in a vacuum, all by ourselves. We didn't really know how everybody else was running their businesses, and thank God we didn't because otherwise we'd be charging 10% profit margin, 20% pro profit margin like everybody else. I can promise you, if I listened to all the other jokers out there running their businesses, I would have a hell of a lot less money than I do today. I used to think everybody ran their business just like this. Everybody made a shit ton of money. That's what I used to think. And then I would go to these conventions. It was about a bunch of chess beaters. And they were like, oh, I built three pawns a day. And I'm like, wow, you must make a lot of money. How much money do you make? 
Well, I can't tell you that, it's top secret. I'm like, why not? We're here at a convention, we're here at a facility to help grow, right? And you're telling me, you got no problem telling me how big a rocks you can set in a pond, but you can't tell me how much money you make doing that? That's bullshit. And you know what I found out? A, they had no clue how much money they were making. B, they weren't making anything. And C, they didn't even know it. When you ask someone, I know I'm going off here, but this oh, stuff, this, is good. this pisses me off. When you ask somebody, another business owner, how much money did you make? And he gives you some bullshit answer like, oh, I have to check with my accountant. We're having added all the other numbers up. You're probably talking to, to a guy or girl that hands a shoebox full of receipts to the accountant at the end of the year and expects that accountant to make some kind of heads or tails out of all that crap. You need to run a serious business. You need to, you need to do the little things. You know, the difference between the success and not success is, you know, the success, successful people, we do the little things like entering the crap into QuickBooks at least once a week. Nobody wants to do that stuff. They just let it pile up. But that's the difference between winners and losers. Just doing the shit nobody else wants to do. You know, you show me a winner, I'll show you somebody who does the crap that nobody else wants to do, and they do it repeatedly, all the time. Consistently. <laughs> yeah. That means I have stuff to work on as well, because my books aren't as organized as they should be. <laughs> no one's is. <laughs> uh, so going on here today into Colorado, we're gonna wrap up this interview, and then also in a couple days, we're gonna climb a mountain, but talk about uh, what, what we're gonna expect to see in this event. So how it's going to turn out? Yeah, they, how it's going to turn out, I have no idea. But we've done, we've done uh, several events. This is uh, primarily focused on marketing. Marketing, the bottom line of marketing, just to get your freaking phone to ring. Okay. Once you get your phone to ring, then you got to know how to how to answer it. And trust me, there's a very special way you can do that. So people actually want to buy stuff from you. But throughout this event, the true goal is to have every participant walk away from this event knowing that they can be anything they freaking want. They can be, become millionaires. That's the goal. It's marketing based, but you gotta, right now they come in thinking one way, they're gonna leave and go, this is the best freaking event I've ever been to in my entire life. I can do it. And then they're gonna go home and kick ass. And because they're part of our group, we stay on their ass and put a boot up their ass to make sure they do kick ass. Bam. Thank you. And then, <laughs> uh, what's the plan for hiking? Oh, we're going to, well, we're supposed to get a foot of snow, but there's this thing called the incline, and it's one mile. It's like, I don't know, 22,000 steps straight up a mountain, and uh, it's going to kick your butt. So that's what we hope to do on Sunday. So we'll put that on film also uh, if we don't get snowed out. But I'm, I'm interested because I hike hills every day, every day, and I'm going to see if I'm really in shape or not. So Awesome. And then one last thing, uh, Steve Schinhauser. Schinholzer. Schinholzer, I'm sorry. Right. <clears throat> The Shin Fu method, everyone's talking about, what is the Shin Fu method? Whew. The Shin Fu method, this is a, it's embarrassing, but it, somebody dubbed it many years ago. It is a special, open, honest conversation that you have with someone on the telephone before you go running out to them. See, most times your phone rings, hello, can you do this? Sure can, I'll be right there. And like little puppy dogs, <laughs> we just run right out there. We tap dance, go through the hula hoops, treadmill, Bullshit, only to be told what? At the very end, what happens? We wait to the money, right? We, we, we throw up all this crap all over them, and at the very end, we throw the money at them, right? And what happens? Come on, what happens? You're right. You get some bullshit like, I wanna think about it. And all that really is, what is that really? You know what that is? That means, hey, if they told the truth, they would speak. it would sound something like this, Keith, Oh, I just it's wasted two it's really, it's, really a, it's really a no, but I don't have the balls to tell you no. So I'm going to give you a BS answer like I want to think it over. Let me check with my accountant. i got to check with my spouse. All those answers are crap. And all the Shin Fu is is to have a phone conversation up front so when you go out there, they have agreed not to lie to you. You don't have to say, buy the job from me, but you have to at least tell me no because you can't say a lie. You can't tell me you want to think it over. And this saves hours and hours, months, months, months. Last year, and I'll give you one last fact, I know this, this interview is like rambling on, I had 338 leads. I have people send me pictures, I'm in the pond business, so they send me either a blank slate or mostly broken ponds they want fixed. Out of 338 consultations on the phone, okay, I sold 74 jobs from my computer without even going out there. I just email them contracts. Now these aren't large contracts, 
they each probably average a couple of grand each, okay? But then when my boys get out there, they, they know how to upsell stuff. But I went on 40 consultations last year. 40 consultations. I got 40 deposit checks. Normally when someone tells you, I close them all, or I even close 90%, you go, yeah, there's a liar, because that, that's not true. This is true. And I'll finish here. 22% closure rate is what I had four years ago. I started this new method, the Shin Fu method. The very next year I closed 94%, then 95%, now 100%. And this year I'm seven for seven so far in the field because I have such a brutally honest conversation that's damn hard to have that when I come to your house, I'm coming to collect a check. I'm coming to collect a deposit check to provide a service. We ain't talking about the service. We already did that talking on the phone, period. That's called the Contractor Sales Academy. Just look us up on Facebook. Check it out. Badass. Thanks. Thank you. All right, man. All right, stay tuned. Click the links in the description below this video to learn more uh, about the Contractor Sales Academy. And uh, stay tuned. Watch the other videos next to this or even in this playlist because this is going to be an awesome journey and tons of vlogs and more interviews as well. All right, later.